modern seers unique in comparison to the various we want to say schools of thought and methods of going about spirituality. I have three points about this. Number one, there's nothing unique about modern seers. Okay? It's normal for human beings to look for spiritual things, move along the path of spirituality, and um, so it's just natural that there will be groups of people forming, having similar thoughts, beliefs, uh, aspirations. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but that, what I just said, calls for uniqueness. Um, we're all climbing the same mountain, but from different sides. And it depends on uh, what side you prefer. Some people like rocky side, another person likes to have you know, easy green side, another one likes to climb sheer cliff, or what not. So, from this point of view, uh, just because I'm a teacher here at this point, um, the, the uniqueness of modern series is that you know, I attract certain kind of people which are interesting to me and interesting to each other. And the third thing, which is probably what you're looking for, is how are we different from other groups? Well, I also thought about it, probably not enough, but some. I think that I like direct approach. I don't like beating around the bush. This is already something unique. Another thing, uh, thing is that I am um, extremely opposed to narrow ideas. I am, you know, intolerant of narrow ideas. And, um, you know, that's why, like, in my Facebook account, profile, you would read that I hate dogma. I don't like limited ideas, but I don't like when people come to me and, uh, you know, they are prejudiced about something. Mm -hmm. Especially something which is easy, easy to resolve. So from this point of view, I, in, I, um, I look around um, different spiritual organizations from so-called traditional religions like Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Hinduism and whatnot. And uh, I look at uh, new religions. And what we see is that um, different traditions answer different questions of different people, that's normal. But for young people, uh, mainstream religions, certainly in the West, particularly in Europe, have failed miserably. Like if you walk into any church, for example, or synagogue, don't know about mosques, don't go there regularly, um, what you see is that there are very few young people. And the parishioners will tell you that, oh, young people are not interested in religion. And I don't see that at all. I see that young people are very interested in spirituality. It's just they don't find it, can't find it. They're not looking, looking for it in the same way they used to do before. And certainly they're not looking for it in the churches. Um, that is not 100% true, but the majority of young people I meet are interested in spirituality but they don't go to church. And the answer is very simple, why? Because whatever they offer there is not really relevant to the new generation. You know, now we can accuse the new generation of many things, but not everyone should be accused. There's lots of people who are truly interested, but they are um, they're not being fed by existing religious institutions. In fact, I would say that they're catastrophically not being fed by new religious, by uh, current traditional religious institutions. And um, the interest I have in modern series with modern series is specifically to provide easy but effective spiritual practices which work well, that's what effective means, uh, and that are culture free. These are the three, uh, culture neutral, these are the three pillars of modern Sierra's uh, spiritual precepts, which I just introduced like six months ago. Um, 
easy, effective, and culturally neutral. Now, <clears throat> I was just talking with Randy about this, to the fellow we're going to see in Washington, D.C., how what we think is culturally neutral is not really that neutral at all. We are talking about culturally neutral techniques with respect to American culture. They would sound different in places like India or, say, Philippines. Well, Philippines is very similar to the United States. But they are there much more heart-centered than we are here. So they would hear different things and they would be interested in different things. So, so ultimately, Modern Sears is one organization among several that provides new uh, answers for new questions from the new generation. And yes, these questions are not fundamentally different from the questions asked 2,000 years ago, 100 years ago, but they're asked in a new way because every new generation has to go through the path in the same way but in a different way. So there is some, uh, so every, every spiritual path is basically about sidestepping the ego, but how you do that depends on how ego is organized. So while, say, your parents um, were liberated people of the 60s, but liberated in a, in a strange kind of way, uh, my parents were people who were close to the Depression, and they were definitely much more difficult as far as recognizing the truth and you know, moving beyond the ego. So that, that is a long story. Um, another thing why this is part, so part of the point three, another thing why modern series is, is unique is that we um, strongly advocate that there should be some measurable way uh, to assess effectiveness of spiritual practices. And although at this point we do not have any direct assessment tools, uh, they are applied. I mean, I think that each tradition should be evaluated, first of all, on their own standards. Um, so, for example, if you go to Christianity, uh, which is the dominant religion right here in the United States, um, you should ask them a question, what are your goals, how are you achieving them, and what is the rate of achievement? And if you go to most churches, they'll tell you that they're talking about love, brotherhood, this is what Jesus was talking about, what else? Love, brotherhood, um, tolerance. Uh, Jesus was a pretty radical guy, very radical of his, for his time. And you will find that the majority of churches are conservative, intolerant. They are very brotherly as long as you're part of their congregation. They don't particularly like you if you're from another congregation. They talk about love, but actually there's there's a lot of hate there. Um, also, all spiritual traditions are about releasing the ego, and I think that uh, most churches in the United States are cesspool of ego. You know, and I think that it's not just my opinion, but lots of people who have eyes to see, with not a lot of insight, they can see that this is true. So, I would pin them down and say, okay, if you are Christians, Good. Be disciples of Jesus Christ. Be tolerant. Be liberal. Be the most radical person you can be in the society. Be in the face of corruption. Turn the tables upside down in the temple. Go to the mall during Christmas time and tell people to go and celebrate Christmas rather than shopping. And don't take it literally what I'm saying, but that's basically the point of it, is that I don't like hypocrisy. And I think that most religions right now are cesspool of hypocrisy. And it's not just only cesspool, it's just really stinking cesspool right now. <clears throat> and I think that in this country, it's probably one of the most stinking you know, places you can find. Slightly better than Afghanistan. I don't know by how much. And that's another thing where, you know, in, in modern series, we want to um, to be open about this. Why should we hide this? 
and I'm not talking about our own opinions, but I think that why shouldn't we go into churches and go into the you know squares, you know, say in Buffalo, and instead of saying to people, do you believe in Bible? Why don't we ask which Bible do you believe in, and what do you mean by believing in that? And why are you believing in some book? rather than practicing something on your own to realize God directly rather than reading about God. You know, this kind of things we need to, we need to do. And uh, this is in many ways directly in the spirit of what my guru taught. But he taught this 50 years ago and his organization turned to be a very dogmatic, not at all more open-minded uh, group that he didn't want it to be, which is kind of interesting why that happened. And I kind of know why, because people were too attached to the Guru and to what he said. And I would like to train people who certainly follow what I, what I tell them, but they also need to be able to stand on their two feet and, you know, and think for themselves, really, 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 you know. And uh, that hasn't happened very well in my Guru's organization might happen in the future, but at this point it hasn't.